Poetry Express, Rhythm and Meter in Poetry by Chuck Guilford. There are similar, but these are similar, but not identical concepts, rhythm and meter. Rhythm refers to the overall tempo or pace at which the poem unfolds, while meter refers to the measured beat established by patterns of stressed and unstressed syllables. Poets who write free verse generally de-emphasize or ignore meter and focus instead on refining and tuning their natural speech rhythms to suit the poem's tone and content. Or as Ezra Pound puts it, they compose in the sequence of the musical phrase not in the sequence of the metronome. Still, even if you write mostly free verse, understanding some basic metric principles can help. As has often been pointed out, English sentences naturally tend to establish a dominant beat, usually iambic. So, if you have a troublesome line or phrase that just doesn't feel right, you may find that by quickly scanning your line, you can spot and fix the problem. Replacing a one-syllable word with a two-syllable word or vice versa. Besides, helping with such quick rhythmic tune-ups, metric awareness is essential for writing in traditional fixed forms, such as blank verse or the sonnet. Here, very briefly, is how to scan a line. First, read it out loud to get a feel for where the stressed and unstressed syllables fall. Then mark the syllables as being stressed or unstressed. Mark unstressed syllables with a V and stressed syllables with a dash. When, when A, Jack strives, some rocks, vast weight to throw. If you're in doubt, try another line. The line to lay, burzand, the words move slow. This second line is more difficult partly because of the three lightly stressed syllables, burz and the. Yet this very faltering laboring for consistency seems to emphasize Pope's point about effort and struggle about sound echoing sense. By now we can recognize a dominant, a dominant meter. So this is, this is the metric um, standard iambic pentameter of English. And knowing that meter helps us fit the doubtful syllables into the established pattern, in this case iambic pentameter, because there's one, two, three, four, uh, penta means five. So one, two, three, four, that like there are five meters uh, in here, pen, penta, so penta, like and then pentagon, you know, pentagon means that there are five parts to it. This short discussion just gives the barest essentials. Uh, how deeply you get into metrics depends upon your level of interest and the type of poetry you write. And anybody who sings or writes music, knows how to play percussion, play, play the drums, or knows how to read music, understands all of this perfectly. Because if you're going to write a song, if you're going to do song lyrics, if you're going to play an instrument, or if you're going to sing in a choir, you need to know rhythm and meter. Can you imagine if an entire orchestra all played at the wrong spot? Now that would sound really bad. So this is how an entire orchestra or two singers singing together, right down to the when they breathe in and breathe out, singers have to synchronize their rhythm and meter and their words together. And so having rhythm and meter in speech helps instruments stay synced together and it helps your poet poem to sound musical and it helps two singers to sing together at the same time and it helps two singers or instruments alternate at perfect moments in time. 
And that's just a few reasons why it's important to have rhythm and meter in poetry. So this is a short little, you know, uh, trip into how rhythm and meter affects poetry and how poetry and music are intimately together. So if you have any questions, feel free to email me.